Here's a message to my unborn It's a cold world even when the sun's warm Only put our hands up when they guns drawn They simply don't feel us They wanna put three in our chest like the hiccup Here's a message to my unborn It's a cold world even when the sun's warm Only put our hands up when they guns drawn They simply don't feel us They wanna put three in our chest like the hiccups Young, black, and gifted, and they still judge me I can give a damn as long as my daughters love me Bridget Byrne, you can hear it in my cadence Tell a man the truth, he quick to say that you hate me They think it happens overnight now I take patience, these women come forth, family God's in his paper. Never judge before you love, guilty before innocent when you're the same color as us. German engineering when I steer it, always run directly towards it even when you fear it. The stress get heavy, especially when you near it. I'm talking about your goals, and when you feel them in your soul, you close. Hey son, you are the best thing that could have ever happened to me. November 11, 1987. I am so proud of you and all of your accomplishments as a dad and a provider. You've been a great son. Made my own way. I don't need no handouts. Tell a nigga no. Now he not your man now. The hate starts showing. You hear it in they quotes. Niggas be confused, claiming that they woke. 2020 luxury, whip with the bucket seats. Love out the A1 who stuck with me, from the mud and fuck with me. Gotta love Brit, cause she rode and she love a G. And she stayed down, that's what's up to me. Doing 60 and a 45. Five. I'ma need a clone just to count up all these blessings. Real niggas in the drought, kept it 100 when these niggas couldn't count. I'm far from the boys. Always was the man. Nowadays these boys popping perks, popping zins. So I gotta move smart, do it with a plan. Teach my daughter to do it for themselves, but never for a man. Damn. Happy love and night, son. Sorry, Dad. I miss talking with you this evening. But I wanted you to know from the day that you left New Jersey, 2007. You left as a young child. Today, you are born there. I'm on my morning mental. I'm going to start out here because I need to get that sunshine and my melanin. They're trying to block the sun, y'all. Why? They say it's because of global warming. They say because they're trying to protect us. But how can you protect us from something that's made for us? He flew into the sun. He flew directly into the sun. What the hell was that? All you got to do is look up. It's a lot going on right above your head, and they're trying to hide a lot of it from you. I'm going to start out here on my morning mental. I want to send all praises to the Most High real quick. This should be a bright, sunny day, but it's kind of gray. This should be 
sunshine that makes me want to get into the shade. But it looks to me like I'm already behind the shade. It looks to me like somebody doesn't want my brown skin to manufacture any more vitamins from the sun. Like they don't want my pineal gland to be fed. Isn't that strange? But then again, only somebody who doesn't have any melanin. Somebody who doesn't have a developed pineal gland. Somebody who doesn't understand that the root word of cult is culture. A cult root word is culture. So when the white man gets afraid and describes black unity as a cult, is he really trying to tell us that we're finding our way back to our own culture? Have they scared us so much that if we say we want our own culture, they say you can't do that because that's a cult. Well, I'm sorry. I think we live in the Western culture. I think we're trapped under the white man's culture. They try to school you in school like y'all back in school today about Western culture culture. Matter of fact, what I don't understand is why is it that when anybody decides to get themselves together, get themselves organized and get on one accord, they are cult. By now, you all have seen the broadcast that splashed across all of European TV yesterday about the NFAC, the not effing around coalition. And they said that we were a cult. But then again, I have to actually let you know that whenever I see people struggling to talk about something they know nothing about, they're going to make mistakes. When hip hop first came out back in 1979, white folks struggled to figure out what it was. They didn't even call it hip hop. They didn't know what it was called. When the first record got on the radio, which was not Rapper's Delight, it was a song called King Tim the Third, personality jock by the Fat Back Band. Y'all remember how this song go. Anyway, right after that, Sugar Hill Gang came out with Rapper's Delight. White people didn't know what to call it. Oh, I remember there was an article in the paper where they said that it was a fad and that it would fade away within a year because nobody in their right mind would ever get with talking on a record. R&B singers said that it was an insult because it wasn't real music. Country people thought it was a war cry and other people said that it took too much thinking for them to figure out the songs. That was in 1979, y'all. And now hip hop, as they call it, is the largest money making genre on the planet, bigger than all other forms of music. You know why? Because the culture of white people accepted it for what it was, assimilated it. And now they buy more hip hop music, rap music, if you will call it, than anybody else. But what they fail to understand, hip hop was not just music. Hip hop was not just uh, uh, the, the mixing and all of that. It was not. Hip hop was the culture, the culture that grew out of the underbelly of America that existed at that time that was being denied their chance to partake in all of the riches that the world was enjoying. They couldn't partake in the disco era. They couldn't go down to Studio 54 and mix it up with the big wigs. Oh no, so they had to stay in the hood, in the ghetto, on the blocks. They had to stay up in the Bronx. They had to stay up in Brooklyn and Manhattan, all over in Queens. They had to stay up on Long Island. They couldn't come to the club. They was the broken, the destitute. The Bronx was a burnt out shell. Can I teach y'all real quick? And nobody in there had the money to hop on a train and go downtown to where they were shaking it up. So they came up with their own music. The same way we like to beat on pots and pans. Big shout out to the Junkyard Band of Washington, D.C. A bunch of brothers got on the corner with trash cans and coffee cans and whatever they could find and came up with the funkiest, the funkiest tracks that they could think of. And to this day, the Junkyard Band, as they're called, is in history as one of the, one of the most renowned go-go bands of all time. You can't talk go-go without talking about Chuck Brown. D.C. talk to me. You can't talk about go-go without talking about Big Tony and Trouble Funk. You can't talk about go-go unless you bring up everybody from, from Rare Essence to Chuck Brown to Cold Red to, to can I keep going? EU Freeze. Anyway, they said it was a culture. 
Then they said it was a cult. So us trying to get free, us talking about liberation, us not acting like a bunch of wild animals, us exercising some thought, us being focused on one goal. I think that says unity, but they said it's a cult. Mm -hmm. Is the U.S. Army a cult? What about the Marines? Air Force? Navy? Coast Guard? What about the Secret Service? What about the police force? What about all of these organizations where you're required to be on one accord? Would that be considered a cult? I'll be the first one to tell anybody who's never served on active duty that active duty life is a completely different world. It has its own laws. It has its own rules. It has its own dynamics. It has its own. Uh, it doesn't have the rat race that we have here in the, in the civilian world for jobs because you have a job. You got to have a job just to be in the situation unless you are dependent. And even then, there's a little bit of money for you for just being that. So it's a whole different way of life. And you can get away with some things. In that culture that you could never get away in this culture. The same way there's some things you can get away in this culture that you cannot get away in that culture. Well, us getting together to make some modifications to our culture does not make us a cult. Or does it? I'm on my morning mental deep this morning, y'all. Really on it. I'm on it. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. I want to take you real quick for my students to the first book of Enoch with Yahweh's name restored. And I want you to think that somewhere around chapter 91, we'll start right there. If you have a copy, please go grab it. Don't grab an interpretation and don't grab someone's commentary. That's not the actual book. That's someone's opinion. And as you can tell, look at how the white people wrote about us while we welcome the fact that you acknowledge this black militia, that you acknowledge this unification of black people worldwide. We still kind of offended that you called us a cult because we are structured. I don't know where the cult comes in. Did you see us sacrificing anything? Was there an expiation? Was there a letting of blood anywhere? Did I get up there and light a flame and did we light a candle? And did I get the spear and go up? Booga, booga? I mean, did we cult out? Was I passing out cups of Kool-Aid and trying to tell everybody we have to kill ourselves because we have been attacked? Did I actually tell people that we're going to hold up in this house and we ain't nobody going nowhere until I say so, even if they burn us up out of this joint? Did I do that? No, that's what occults have done in the past. People like David Koresh and Jim Jones and all these crazy white people that have told people, I am he that has come after all these time and they followed his ass right to hell. OK, so no, 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 no. Ain't no cult over here. What's over here is black power. What's over here is black unity. What's over here is people who have had enough. And what's over here is what is being fulfilled in the original scriptures before you change everything around. It says somewhere in 91, one, it says, and y'all remember Methuselah? Y'all knew Methuselah supposed to live to be 900 and some years old. We're going to bring Methuselah back into the picture because we got to talk to Methuselah about what I'm about to say right now. It says, now my son Methuselah, uh, please summon all your brothers on my behalf and gather together to me all the sons of your mother. And for a voice calls me and the spirit is poured over me so that I may show everything that shall happen to you forever. He said, go get everybody. Bring them on to me. Get all your people. Get their cousin. But give me Cause what I'm about to break off to y'all. This is what's going to happen to you forever. When they say forever. They mean forever. Y'all remember the song forever, forever, ever, forever, ever. Hell yeah, forever. It goes on to say. And at its completion, the house of the kingdom shall be burnt with fire. And therefore, the whole clan of the chosen root shall be dispersed. That's deep. Some of that went right over some of y'all head. It says that the house of the kingdom shall be burnt with fire and the whole clan of the chosen root will be dispersed, meaning we are going to destroy that which you've become comfortable with, meaning we are going to obliterate the kingdom you have built 
that has to go. It will be burned with fire. And nobody ever said where the fire was going to come from. Nobody said the fire was going to come from us. We just said fire. Fire can come from above. Fire can come from below. Y'all know this world we live in at any moment, something could break open and fire is the inevitable, inevitable um, result. If a meteor comes flying to earth, what's the problem? It's the fire and the concussion that's going to kill you. If there is a volcano that erupts in your city right now and the lava get loose, what's going to kill you? The fire and the lava. And if, if let's say, just for instance, I'm just talking, somebody start a fire and they don't put it out and it turns into a conflagration like they got going on in California. What happens? A fire storm, it wipes through. So it's going to be burnt by fire. And then it says the whole clan. Now, when you talk about a clan, we're talking about a group. We're talking about a, a group of people that's put together, sometimes by family, sometimes by cause. The Ku Klux Klan, even though they changed their name to the KKK, no, it should be the KKC because it's made of families. And yes, I want to I want to acknowledge the individual who pointed out nowhere in the SPLC that I see the KKK mentioned as a hate group. I'm sorry. It's not in there. It's not been as a terrorist group. They're not in there. I'm sorry. Um, so. Um, thank you for bringing that to my attention, but also we're not in there either. Now, the chosen clan would be all of you all who are truly children of Yahweh. If you're not, then this doesn't apply to you. Then you can go on and find something else to do this morning on my morning mental. But for those of you all who are the faithful, and nobody can tell you no different. Those of you all who have broken free of the slave master's church that's used to condition you and to control you. You see, when they tell you that it's a battle between good and evil, we always tend to think that it's, you know, it's the forces of you know, Satan and his demons against, you know, us. <laughs> Most of the time they standing on the sidelines. They don't have to do the work no more because they got some of us over here who have signed up. We're doing the work for them. Yeah. So it's harder for you to believe that the enemy looks like you. It's hard for y'all to believe that, that the demons and the spirits and the all of these vibes that y'all be feeling that they're emanating not from them, but people who look just like you. Yes, that's right. So the chosen. It's saying that you all going to be dispersed. You go, you, you go scatter to the wind. And what's going to happen is you are going to have to get yourselves back together. You're going to have to unify at some point. You've been dispersed on purpose. And now trying to put you back together is becoming an almost impossible task, but doesn't mean that it can't happen. Listen what the scripture says in 93.9. It says after that in the seventh week. An apostate generation. You can call it apostate, apostate. Let me tell you what ap apostasy is. It is when, pardon my language, when you don't give a F, you don't care no more. You don't care about the church. You don't care about no standards. You didn't really, you indifferent to worship. You don't care about that. You, don't, you ain't got to worship nothing. We got this. Man, don't come at me with all that church stuff, bro. No, nah, I'm not opening it. I don't want to talk to nobody. That's what. Having that type of attitude is that a whole generation will arise that will reject any type of, of teachings about the most high. There's people right now like, what's this most high he's talking about? Somebody sit up on a building. Somebody even said that I was talking about myself when I said, you don't know. I mean, if you're that ignorant, if you're that lost and you're still walking away, then there's nothing anyone can do to bring you back. But if you're trying to walk this way and you need some help, yes, ask your questions. But don't automatically jump into denial because when you do that, you leave yourself in a stupid place because there's nobody around you that knows and you don't know either. And somebody told me a long time ago, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. A generation is going to show up. And that generation. They don't give a damn about none of this. Nothing that I'm saying. Well, they said they're going to shall arise. And it says... Its deeds shall be many, and all of them shall be criminal. It says its deeds shall be many. You're going to do a whole lot, like y'all doing too much.com right now. And all of them are criminal. No matter what you're doing in that generation, 
Oh, y'all gonna be making up stuff that we ain't even heard of. Y'all know how y'all come in every day. Yo, we doing this, we doing this. Yo, we ain't up on this, man. We got this challenge going, man. Y'all down with the WAP, man. What's going on? A lot of energy in the wrong place. I didn't say it. He's saying it's going to be criminal. In order for you to be a criminal, you have to break a law. Well, what law are you breaking? Well, let's keep it moving. It says that at its completion, and there shall be elected the elect ones of righteous from the eternal of the righteousness to whom shall be given seven times instruction concerning all of his flock. I just told somebody something. Y'all didn't get the morning mental. That was your release just right there. Somebody need to be jumping up on your job at your house, wherever you are. You need to be standing up to take a step back because if I, what I just gave you is something they'll never give you in the slave master church. That little line right there coming out of the book of Enoch is one of the most powerful lines in all of the ancient scriptures. Is, that's one of the reasons they sat there and say, oh, we got to take this out because if they see this, they're going to know that they have the power to get up and unite themselves, even if they got to kill some people to do it so that they can be free. I'm going to read it to you one more time. And I know y'all should be somebody better wake up. You better take another sip of your coffee or whatever it is that wakes you up. Here it is right here. It says at its completion. There shall be elected. You're going to choose. The elect ones of righteousness. You're going to choose who's righteous. You're going to choose who you want to lead you. You're going to choose the one. And it ain't going to be just one. You're going to elect righteous ones. And it says they are going to come from the eternal plant of righteousness. You've never heard about the plant of righteousness. Oh, you heard about the tree of knowledge. Yeah, everybody, oh, you you, but you never heard of the eternal plant of righteousness. I'm going to sit back and let all let y'all go ahead and call your local pastors and your, your deacons and all of those so-called learned folks and your ministers and your bishops and all these titles they done made up and the disciple and the apostle. Go ahead and give them a call right now. I'm going to hold on for a second and tell you, say, and what's all this about this plant of righteousness? I What's happening? You told me I couldn't be righteous. You told me we was all lost. You told me that we was born jacked up in the whole rest of our life. All we got to do is try to kiss a, a God we can't see or touch and give all our money to you. And then at the end, maybe we might get in. That's what they taught you. But they never talked to you about the plan of righteousness. If it's a plan of righteousness, does it bear fruit? And how can I get some of this fruit? How too can I become one of the righteous on the morning mental? Just thoughts off the top of my head as I first rejoin y'all in the earth realm. I bid you a grand rising. Somebody made a side comment about why I holler out fo fo fo. This shows you how ignorant people are. Maybe I should teach again on numerology. Maybe I should teach again on the significance of when you keep seeing repeated numbers, 444-333-777, what it means that they are messages to you. It's funny that somebody out there has seen 444 themselves and didn't even know what they was looking at and was so stupid about it that they misinterpreted that what it means is your watchers, your guardian angels are giving you acknowledgement that we here, bruh. You on the right path, bruh. Keep doing what you're doing, bruh. We here if you need us. Call on us if you need us. We in the building. That's what 444 means. When you turn around every day and you having a 444 week, you saw 444 on the clock. You woke up at 444. It's time on the microwave, say 444. When you turn on the cable, the first channel that came up to a 444, you just think it's a coincidence. It is not. It is signifying that the Kodash Mata King, the guardian angels, your specific guardian angel, is standing very close to you. And they basically say, go ahead. We right here. You're on the right path, bro. Like what you're doing. Pay attention, though. It's something big going on. That's what they're trying to tell you. Same way I've been trying to tell y'all there's something bigger than what's going on here than just us battling police brutality. We're not just battling police brutality. That's just one arm of the octopus. Us trying to get free is another arm of the octopus. Us trying to exercise our political power correctly. That's another arm of the octopus. Us trying to reconcile and rebuild our communities internally. That's another arm of the octopus. 
rappers, us trying to li- trying to put some, I hate to say it, us trying to hand out some backbones to black men. That's a part of because it's not their fault. Y'all don't seem to understand. Yes, the black woman is the most disrespected. And it, you know what? I don't even want to say disrespect. I, I'm going to say the most shit on person on earth. I'm sorry. Yes, but brothers, y'all not too far behind. Sisters, you got to give us that. Brothers have been traumatized too. I can understand why a lot of my brothers are scared and want to sit on the side and they don't want to get involved. You don't know what they've done to some of us just for being black men. You don't see you don't see some of the things that they're now starting to subject y'all to openly that we've always been object. Why do you think a third of black men are incarcerated on bullshit? Because they're afraid of us. We terrify them in our natural state. And you do too. I want to go back to the scriptures. Because it then says, from the eternal plant of righteousness, to whom shall be given seven times instruction. That means that whatever your learned man of God, your learned man of Yahweh, your learned man of Jehovah, your learned man of Allah, your learned man of El Shaddai, your learned man of all these names you created, that someone is going to come along. Who's been given seven times the knowledge, seven times the anointing, seven times the power, seven times the ability to speak. So the father speaks through him and speaks to your soul and pulls you in a direction that you know if you're not going in, there's something wrong with you. Seven times the ability that those people will be given this power. Listen to the very last part concerning all, not some, all, not have all of his flock. Who do you belong to? You don't belong to the church. You're a member of the church. Who do you belong to? You don't belong to the police. That's why they they, they get mad when you act like you don't. They want to kill you. Who do you belong to on the morning mental? You don't even belong to me. I'm just a conduit. I'm just a voice. I'm just a face. I'm just someone who's been allowed to walk amongst y'all for a little while. And I can see that you don't know what I am. You accuse me of everything criminal. You doubt everything I do. You think that I'm a puppet. What you cannot acknowledge in your spirit is that I am that I am that I have come at my appointed time and you all are acting just like the people did back in the day when they had to wipe shit out the first time you're acting just as you were back then you haven't changed a bit but you're still being told that there will be others amongst you who will also come along they're not gonna keep coming because sooner or later you're going to have your kingdom destroyed and burnt by fire and the whole clan of the chosen Those who are descendants and who have been gifted from the eternal plant of righteousness. You can look this up myself. I'm in somewhere verse 9310 in the book of Enoch, which is actually the book that was taken out of the Bible. First book of Enoch with Yahweh's name restored. Jump in somewhere around chapter 93. Look at verse 9 and read it for yourself. I have no reason to lie to you. I came to connect the world to the truth. A lot of y'all, you know the truth, but you're not applying it to the world. You can sit there all day long and think that you the most learned, the most most philosophical person on earth. But the moment you open the door, the first thing you say is what is going on out here? What's going on out there is exactly what's going on right here. He says it's concerning all his flock. You don't belong to yourself either. You belong to the one who created you. I'm not talking about the place where you pay your dues and give all your money. I'm talking about the life force that created your life force. You belong to them. You are a flock. You are sheep. That's why they call you sheeple. Sevenfold shall be given of instruction concerning all his flock. That means that you're going to have some teachers that's going to come along and give y'all some instructions. And I'm pretty sure when you get your first day at your job, let me know what, let me tell you what's crazy about people. I got to stop. I got to do this. Y'all act like, y'all act like, y'all, y'all don't function in the real world the way you function on the plantation. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Your plantation is your job. That's what I'm talking about. If you're on your job, you're on the plantation. It's just a different type of plantation. And they're giving you a piece of paper, a piece of a tree to make you feel like being at the plantation is not, uh, there's nothing wrong with being at the plantation. All right, so let me think about it. 
So if somebody on your job, if they walk in and say, hey, Bob, let me talk to you a minute. And Bob go over there and they fire Bob. And they put Bob out of the building. Do you get out of your seat, out of your job, or leave your station to go outside to talk to Bob who just got fired and be like, I don't like the fact that they fired you, Bob. I don't, that's messed up, Bob. No, you keep your ass right at your job because you know you need to make your money to pay your bills to take care of your family. What Bob did is with Bob. Y'all don't do that on your job, but you'll do it when it comes to liberating your people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If somebody decides they want to try to liberate the people, a lot of y'all will take the job. But as soon as somebody lose their job, y'all want to quit the job too. Do you do that on your job? You got more faith in the slave master system than you have in liberating your own people. Then when, when somebody on your job comes in and starts to tell you about the changes that's coming down with the job because they was up in the meeting and they heard, you know, a lot of y'all be like, when they going to do that? Oh, that's going to be, oh, so we going to how many hours? Oh, they cutting back pay. Y'all take it as gospel on the plantation. But if somebody comes along and says, hey, y'all, they about to change our way of life. We about to live by some different rules. Look, y'all, this shit about to come down. I came down here to let y'all know. Instead, y'all, no, you a liar. Can't be that way. No, 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 there must be a trick. See, y'all don't function the same way about your own peoples that you function on the slave master's plantation. This is a sign. Of low racial esteem. You see, you got all, I love my job. I've been here 20, 30 years. I am. Yeah, you're not your job, but you are your people. You're not your job, but you are your people. Y'all so quick to stand for somebody else's dream, but you won't stand for your own. When Martin Luther King got up there and said, I have a dream, somebody in the crowd just said, what dream? <laughs> Y'all don't, ugh. It's like pulling teeth. It's like pulling teeth, bro. Let me finish this scripture so I can get on with what I got to say. It goes on to say, for what kind of human being is there? I'm somewhere around verse 11. For what kind of human being is there that is able to hear the voice of the Kodesh one without being shaken? How can you sit here on facts over feelings or the morning mental and tell me that when we start to dig into the deep ancient text that you don't find something stirring in your soul that you ain't never felt before. And you sit there. There's people in the 80s and their 90s that have sat up and told me I haven't heard this voice. And I'm so glad I got to hear this voice before I leave this planet. Oh, I've met them and I've taken their energies and taken they've given them to me because it's wisdom. They can't give it to somebody who's not prepared to receive it. But oh, when they heard the voice of the ones that could hear the voice of the Kodesh and be shaken by you shaken too. Who is there that is able to ponder his deep thoughts? I'm reading from the book. I'm not making this up. So you got to memorize this stuff. One without being shaken. You shaking right now. Who is there that can look directly at all the good deeds? None of us. What kind of person is he that can fully understand the activities of heaven so that he can see a soul? Or perhaps a spirit. Listen to what he said. See a soul. Can you imagine if somebody told you, I don't see you. I see your soul. Remember, I taught you not too long ago that it's not until you step into the judgment hall where they say one comes. Remember, I taught that and one comes and then your physical is taken away and we see the true form of your soul. Even if you're in a body that's all deformed and you're trapped in it, don't worry. Once you go to the judgment that's stripped away and the mirror is lowered and you see the true form of your soul. You see the deeds you commit here on earth shape the final destination and the configuration of your soul. So keep on doing all the ugly things you're doing right now. When your physical is stripped away, I don't care how fine you are right now. I don't care how tight you got it together. All that's going to be stripped away and the true appearance of your soul will be shown to you and shown before the great one. And then if you look that detestable, that horrible, you can't even stand in the light. You would then have to flee into the darkness. And that's when you go into Sheol and you go into the lake of fire and hell. I'm not preaching. I'm just teaching y'all some things they don't tell y'all. They don't want y'all to know this. But everything that's happening around us is because of this. And I'm trying to put the two together for you so that you get it. On the morning mental. What kind of person 
can see a soul or a spirit or fully understand the activities of heaven. Notice he said the activities. You've never heard anybody talk about the activities. You heard about going there. You heard about what you got to do to get in. You heard about all these requirements. You heard about if you don't do this, this going to happen. But nobody ever talks to you about what goes on. Who can understand the activities of a place who's never been there? How can you tell us what our game plan is if you wasn't in the meeting? How do you know when we move and how we move and should we move if you don't know what affects those moves? How can you sit there and act like you're an expert about a person you've never talked to? How can you sit there in your arrogance? How can you sit there in your narcissistic ways and say to yourself, I know, but I don't know nothing about that. I've never never heard so many ignorant people in my life say, man, I don't like blah, blah, and I can't stand blah, blah, and you know, and this, and I said, well, how much do you know? I don't know nothing about it, but I don't know nothing about it, but those are the people that you need to get behind us because as Harriet Tubman said, she would have killed them a long time ago. It, but who can understand the activities of heaven less someone who's been there? Hmm. I'm on my morning mental. I really am this morning. In chapter 93, it says, I mean, verse 93, it says, what kind of person is anyone that is able to understand the nature of the length and the width of the earth? To whom has the extent of this been shown? Is there perchance any human being that is able to understand the length of heaven, the extent of its altitude upon which it is founded, the number of the stars, the place where all the luminaries rest, the luminaries, you do know what the luminaries are. See, this is not for the weak minded. This is not for the unlearned. You got to know some things to sit up in here or you're going to sound like the person in the back of the classroom that's been asleep that wakes up and we ask a question and we're in chapter 25 and you still in chapter 20. You sound like a complete idiot so you know the luminaries the sun the moon the stars are all dispatched from the gates if you don't know about the gates you need to study the heavens and that they move on their appointed paths and did you know that in fourth heaven that is where they punish stars that didn't move when they're told to move at their appointed time that in the fourth heaven that's where they torture angels who are disobedient did you think heaven was all lollipops and unicorns oh no 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 no, 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 no. There'll be none of that. Is there perchance any human being that is able to understand? I say that to you because when I say I love you, I love you and I love your righteousness and the walk therein. For the ways of the righteousness are worthy of being embraced, but the ways of wickedness shall soon perish and diminish. That's chapter 94, verse 1. I'm in the book of Enoch this morning with Yahweh's name restored. And the reason that I found it necessary to start there is because this morning I want to address a few things. And I have to show you the, 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 the etymological root of why I say those things. I'm not just speaking off the top of my head. I like to back up what I, what I have to say. And, and I want you all to know that when you look into the eyes of an individual, you're looking into their soul. The individual allows you to look into their soul. Be careful what you look at, because sometimes you may not be able to handle what you see. First thing I want to talk about is. Question was raised to me. They said, well, Jay, in the world today. Uh, we have two problems that we're facing. Which one is worse? Is it the police? brutality that we're witnessing or is it the fact that we as a people are still not being treated as equal human beings across the board well let's let's stop and look at that it's not just police brutality it is the institution of policing did you hear about what happened a 13 year old boy he was he was having a mental uh, episode so his mother called a 911 she said hey my son is having an episode but he's not armed and as usual the police came and when the police came the little boy ran off into the woods police chased him in the woods the mother said all she heard was get down on the ground and she heard some shots kid got shot sounds typical right the kid was white Yes, the kid was white. And this happened in Salt Lake City. In case you haven't heard about it, which speaks to not to police brutality just directed against black folks, but policing in general. 
the entire culture of, of policing in the United States has deteriorated into something of a wild, wild west scene where the, the cops just roll up and start busting. That's where we deteriorated to. Yes, along the way, they so-called invented lesser means. Yes, but those lesser means appeared to be for specific people. Only certain people get tased now when at first they were lighting everybody ass up. Only certain people get hit with rubber bullets now when at first everybody was getting pinged in the booty. Every, now everything that they have from the, from the mass, every tool they have now, they only break them out to kill you. Killing you seems to be, seems to be more expediary as far as dealing with criminals than putting somebody through the judicial system. You got a lot of people who became law enforcement officers so they could be judge and jury. And a lot of y'all, because you didn't want the job, you didn't care who slipped in. It's kind of like the military. When I was growing up, there was two ways you ended up in the military. One of them was you committed a crime and you were sentenced to the military. The other one was you was crazy enough to join. That's how that was back then. Then somewhere around the late 70s, the early 80s, they came up with a new military. And that was a volunteer military that seemed to offer you all the things you couldn't get in life. All you had to do was give us your life in exchange. And that's the model they've been on ever since. And every person who's in the military today, um, nobody was drafted. Nobody made them get there. Nobody was sentenced from a court of law. Do you know that when you went to the military, if you were sentenced as a court of law, that that was your time that you came out honorably discharged and you had all of these goodies waiting for you but you went in as a criminal you got yourself together you got scrubbed up it's a culture policing is a culture and if you look at how it's handled in front of you you can tell it's a culture for instance Oh, so in Rochester, now that y'all done killed this man and got caught on video, putting the bag over his head and killing him. And then, you know, now all of a sudden everybody want to resign. Quitting your job does not exonerate you from paying the price of justice when blood has been spilled, when a life has been taken. I'm speaking directly to those people who know exactly who I'm talking to. You can't sit, turn around and say, oh, I don't kill somebody. Come on, let's everybody quit. But he find out what we did too. Hold on, I'm being observed again. This must be the KKK plane. You know why? Because it's raggedy as hell. Don't sound like they're going to make it. Flying real low, almost out of gas. Hold up. Well, Mr. Johnson, didn't you see the plane go down? I sure did. And did you do anything? Hell no. No, I didn't do a damn thing. I told you. You should have been over here. Anyway, make a long story short. So so they all quit. Mm -hmm. That doesn't let you off the hook. But that's part of their culture. See, if they quit and not get fired, they can go work for another police agency and do it all over again. Did you know that? So when they tell you that they fired them, when they get fired from a police station, they get fired from a, of a detective position, they can't go work or they're not supposed to be able to go work at another law enforcement agency. So when you hear, oh, don't worry, we fired him. Well, no, we don't want him fired. I mean, we don't want him. We don't want him to quit. I'm sorry. We want him fired. Why? We, don't, we want his career in law enforcement or her career in law enforcement ended. It's a culture. Same way they tell you that. There's a lot of people that they look good on paper. You know, he's highly decorated. But then you look at their personnel file and find out he ain't passed not one test. That was so-and-so's cousin. Mm -hmm. so, so the culture killed that boy in Salt Lake City. It's the culture of policing. And I'm, I'm sorry. I got to say this. I don't know where this is coming from. Please don't nobody get offended. But I got I to gotta call it like I see it. Why am I starting to see more and more of these Police involved shootings of black people at the hands of other races that are law enforcement that are not white. That's how I know it's got to be a culture. When I see five, and I'm not trying, I'm just putting it out there. When I see five Mexican police officers or five Latino police officers shoot down the brother, what's, 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 what's really going on? On the one hand, you're saying you're down with us. Do some of you all come over here and get so assimilated into the society that you forget your own roots and now you think you're one of them? So you got to take down a bruh or two? I think your own peoples need to have a talk with you. You ain't got to talk to us. You need to talk to your folks. Or your folks need to get at you and be like, bro, what are you doing? But if your own folks say he ain't one of us no more, y'all need to pass the memo over here so we can figure that out too. 
But you know what? That's why I say it's a culture. Because how many of you black folks think that if something happens, remember there used to be a time, and I'm not making this up. Somebody go back with me back in the day. I remember a time when if something happened and the police got called and a black cop showed up, you felt better because you got to, you know, it was something. Somebody was going to try to empathize with you. You knew if all white folks showed up that it was going to go south real quick okay same way if it was look look if you was in a if you was in a white neighborhood and eight black cops showed up white folks be like nope 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 this is about to go south real quick that's how you know it has become a culture now because it don't make a difference what color they show up now they just show up and you be like it ain't even about their color no more it's about the fact that they are they represent an organization that got a track record of busing first now think about how much how different the world of the united states would be if they had, if, if shit went down like this, 911 with your emergency, yo, man, they over here and all of this is going on. Are they shooting? Yeah, they over here shooting. Well, sir, you know, we don't come to uh, situations where people shoot anymore because they like to shoot at us first. Well, I know that, but can y'all, can y'all come with the not shoot first policy? Y'all got it? Well, we got a few cops around for that. Do you need, do you need the not shoot department? They got a whole department. Come on now, here come the comedy. They got it. Can you imagine that? Can you transfer me to the not shoot department? And they go, you sure you don't want us to handle it? No, no, it ain't that deep. But they never going to do that. It's like that's all you get is the shoot first department. And why they reforming everything, they got to reform 9112. 911 is the setup. Let me tell you something. Let me go ahead and keep it 100 with everybody out here. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it 100 with my folks. And if they, anybody knows me, you know, you know for a fact what I'm about to say is true. I'm really on my morning mental right now. I don't care what's going on, black folk, especially, and I got to talk to my sisters, sisters too, especially sisters, because if you do this as a man, I'm sorry, you a bitch, but sisters, when you dial 911, it's not when the police get there that they're going to kill him. You killed him when you dialed 911. Everybody wants to reform the police department. But where are all of the, the people who, who are protesting the 911 call centers? Where are all of the people demanding that they have a higher level of, of, of I mean, I know it's a, a stressful job, but I mean, people, you don't know our job. I ain't talking about, I'm talking about how many instances of black folks getting shot down or the police showing up gung-ho. We trace it all the way back to the 911 call. Like the 911 caller just sit there and take whatever the fuck they tell them and don't ever turn around and be like, no, bro, this shit don't even make sense, bro. You got to give me more information than that, bro. People who know me know you can't call me up and just start going, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be like, stop. Who told you this? Show me the evidence. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just taking it. I'm not going to just run off half cop because you don't call me up. Yo, man, they down here. Nope. You're not doing that. You're not going to do that. So if you're going to reform police, if you want to defund the police, y'all better do something with the whole. If we're going to continue to use that system, because that system is the trigger. And if you dial 911 on me, I'm going to say it publicly. I'm going to give them a reason for you to be there. I don't play that because I was, let me tell you why. I'm one of those people that, and I know some of y'all can rock with me on this. The reason I'm going to come at you like that, because see, I never would have done something like that to you. That's why. Whenever you do something to a person who never would have done that to you, they don't even think of you like that. They're going to come back at you four times as hard because they never would have done that to you. Ever, 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 ever. Because, you know, they've given you that, that kind of consideration. 911 is where it begins. Now, when the 911 operator doesn't listen to the people, then isn't the 911 operator complicit in the conspiring? To, maybe some of them know that that's what's going to happen. Matter of fact, I've heard the ones where they make a sick, dude, he got a gun, he got a gun, don't he? No, he ain't got a gun. Just send somebody. Instead of asking 88 damn questions all the time, you're not the cop. You're just taking the call. You see, the difference between 911, watch this, and the dispatcher that actually sits on the desk at the police station. And I know a lot of y'all have never had a chance. I know you're not going to go post up in the police station and listen. 
But what normally happens is those cars are always in contact with somebody on the radio back at the headquarters. When the call comes in, that person gets the call. They just, hey, yo, so-and-so, and so I need you to get on this and let's go. What you got next? Yo, yo, so-and-so, I need you to get on. They're not screening shit. They just sending out the orders. So once now it's 911. If the black community had their own 911, wouldn't things be different? Can you imagine what that would be like? 911 black, what's your problem? Hey, we round here, blase, blase, blase. Okay, well, hold on a second. Um, do, and now you got to make it, they got to they gotta have some system in place. Do they send it to the black police? Do they keep it within the community? Or do they say, well, hold on, we got to get in touch with blase, blase, blase. And then they got the responsibility of screening and keeping it clean and so forth. It's their job before it gets to the next level. That's community policing. Again, we're talking about that right now. But that's the culture of policing. Yes, that's a problem. But within that culture, there is a subculture that has grown. And the subculture has one mission. Don't y'all find it ironic that when white people decide that they want to, Im they want to impress, I'm going to use a, a, a kind word, they want to impress upon you the principles of why they police and you should abide by it and you should cooperate and it's for your own good. Don't you find it interesting that when they do that, anybody who agrees with them, they're all for that. You know, they, 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 they want to you know, support them. They, wanna, they want them to be involved, right? Okay. Even if they come out exercising their constitutional rights to carry firearms or peacefully assemble, there's always this unseen agreement that they're with the police. You ever notice that? When the white militia comes out, they walk with the police. Oh, they're having lunch and they're passing cigarettes and they're talking about their kids and shit because half of them is the same people. The only difference is both of them took off their sheets. What other reason would a white militia have to be in the same place as a black militia that was already going to be there if they're not coming to align with the black militia about the issue that the black militia is coming to address. If the only reason they're there is to confront the black militia, then it's based on race. That's racism at its core. They just not showing up in sheets and y'all simple asses sitting around not calling it for what it is. Because at some point we got to get people out of our space. So we can take care of our business. Now, one of the things I've been trying to understand through all of this is what's our space? What is our space? Well, let me tell you what our space is right now. Y'all been hearing me talk about this for a while. Tonight, I'm really going to dig into this on facts over feelings. But the question was asked of me, Jay, where can we put? A million people with guns. Where in the United States can a million people assemble with guns? How much space do you need to put a million black folks with guns? And why would you put a million people in one place with guns? I'm going to dig into that tonight because I think you might find out that if I go through the data and show you where the places are in the United States where you can even get that many people together, that you will find out that even our biggest stadiums only hold 100,000 people. So stadiums are out. That each person takes up so much cubic foot of space. That you have to compute that out and then safely have weapons out there. That you're talking about an area that's going to be pretty big. But when I show you how big a city of a million black folks would be, you would be surprised that we already have a state that's bigger, but almost the same size. It's not a state that we want. I'm just using it as an example. Tonight, I'm going to dig into the mechanics of a million people. For those of y'all who think, well, I don't want to go nowhere. I'm going to stay right here. I'm not leaving. I was born here. I, the, you people. I'm going to give you something to think about tonight. 
I'm going to break down what your million people city would look like in detail if you stay here while the rest of us build a nation somewhere else. How you can have two cities, a million in each place. There's 50 million people here. Y'all acting like things can't be done. If I had, if you, if you had 50 million dollars in the bank and I told you you needed to spend a million to get something done, you would look at me like that ain't no thing. I got 50 million in the bank. I got 50 million black folks and I'm just talking about a million. I'm not talking about y'all let me talk about everybody. I'm not talking about no goddamn everybody. I'm talking about a very, very small group of y'all. One million out of 50 million people. If you got 50 million dollars, a million dollars ain't nothing. You'll blow that in a weekend. Trust me, I know. Y'all got trillions of dollars trillions of dollars we don't care about how it's carved up into millions billions but if i told you all i needed was a million to do this and you got trillions you wouldn't care that should tell you that the forces that are working against you right now of the other group of people, they're so afraid of the 50 million getting on page. They're so afraid of the 3 billion getting on, on code that they have fight against 1 million even getting together. Now, I don't know about y'all, but some of y'all said it's time to go. And some of y'all said it's time to fight. But I'm trying to tell y'all before you can do any of those things, we have to be able to demonstrate that we can unite. Oh, what a day it would be to see a million guns in one place. All these different people from all different walks of life, all different parts of the nation, all these brothers and sisters out here, all of them legally armed, all of them in black, all of them ready to make an ancestral noise that will shake the earth. I try to picture that all the flags flying of all the different tribes. I try to picture that. The book talks about 144,000. Maybe I should start there. Who would be the 144,000 that would show up? I could put you in a stadium. Yes, I could. I could put you in an arena. Yes, I could. I could even put you in an amphitheater. Yes, I could. But a million of us in one place. As I begin the recruiting tour, I'm sure that those conversations will come up. But as we begin to plan, a lot of you all won't be in the meeting. A lot of you all won't be at the table. A lot of you all won't even understand the purpose or the goal. A lot of you all won't understand that to send a message means to send it, not to descend into anarchy and chaos. There are those people out there who cannot do this. They can't do it for legal reasons. They can't do it for moral reasons. They can't do it because they don't have any backbone. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to one million black people who would stand in a million people formation of black guns, black unity to become the cornerstone. For the demand of liberation and the declaration of an independent nation. It doesn't mean that you got to go quit your job, move out and turn in your passport. You're going to go back to your regular life the same way we do all the time. The members of the NFAC are people that you know sit right around you, look you up in your face. But they don't run around telling everybody who they are. Because we still got to eat, sleep and eat here until such a time that we can determine our own destiny. I'm on my morning mental real hard this morning, down by the water. Tonight, we're going to talk about that. What a million looks like. And then, for those of you all, well, why don't we just build a city? We'll talk about what it takes to build a city. I'll give you the blueprint to build your city. I've given you a blueprint to build your army. I've given you the numbers and everything. I've given you the blueprint on how to build out your cultural library. I've given you the blueprint of how to establish your master plan. I've given you the blueprint. I've given you all of these blueprints. 
And if all you're going to do is keep them rolled up and keep them in your closet, then what was the purpose of me giving them to you? Maybe somebody one day will unroll them and pick them up and say, it's time for us to do this. We got to do this. Somebody going to have to help me do this. How much land is required for a million person city? We're going to dig into all of those different pieces. We're going to dig into all of the things such as housing. We're going to talk about the recreation. We're going to talk about retail. We're going to talk about farming. All the different pieces that we put together, the electrical, the electrical grid, the industrial, the foresting around it. How about the adding it all up and what does it take? What is the monetary investment? Just for a million people, not a 50 million black folks. We're talking about just a million people. Just to be an example. You may not be able to have Wakanda, but you can damn sure have black Wisconsin. I just made that up. I don't think that we want Wisconsin, racist as they are. Well, I see my friends with the raggedy ass plane are back again. Y'all hold on. This, 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 uh, this, this surveillance is funny. Here we go. Y'all hold up. Here they come again. We're going to give them a name. This is the ghetto plane. It's the ghetto plane. Now, see, y'all know how I think. See, this is the part where you pull out the RPG or you pull out the stinger. If y'all don't know what a stinger is, my military boys do. You pull out a stinger and yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, so we're going to talk about that tonight and the million guns, a million guns. You see, a million guns requires a different type of mentality, a mentality that is spreading, a mentality that is contagious. It is a mentality that is spreading faster than this pandemic was supposed to be in. Let me take the time to salute all of my comrades overseas, uh, in Europe, uh, in Africa, uh, in South America, and now as I'm seeing on the Asian continent. I salute you and I'll see you soon. Um, those details are forthcoming too. To the folks here in the United States, I told you, I'm trying to take you with me, but if I have to go all by myself, I will, and I will bid you well. So get on board, like the OJs used to say back in the day, <laughs> what was the name of that song, Love Train? Yeah, Love Train, get on board. Uh, don't let us pull off, don't let, the, don't, don't let the, the train leave you at the station. That's all I'm going to say, I'm not going to keep saying it. Don't be the last one to know, and, don't, and when we be the first ones to go. Uh, this is my morning mental for this morning. And I hope you learned something. Hope you took something out of it. I know I did. I always do. I love hanging out with you folks. I will be back tonight for the facts over feelings. And um, there are some folks that have been asking me some questions with regards to what next with Breonna Taylor. Let me tell you. We have cost them $162 million by shutting down the folks that were coming to the Derby, the horses had to run around with nobody. And they, one of the horses ran over somebody in the end. So they lost $162 million. Uh, it was the first time in history that spectators couldn't be in there. The police, there was a standoff. The police found out that black folks can be just as organized and just as trigger happy as you. They didn't want to start it, so we didn't have to finish it. Last but not least... Now that the ballistic reports are back with the district attorney, I mean, with the attorney general, he has no excuse at this point but to act. But we know they got to infuse that into the investigation. And we know that good or bad, a decision has to be rendered in this particular case. Meanwhile, we're still getting shot in other cities. Meanwhile, we're still getting brutalized by the police in other cities. 16 year old boy beat up in New Jersey. Really? 16? Come on, tough cop. But we as a people have yet to respond. And some people say, why don't you give the word? I won't give the word yet because you're not ready. Even though you all account for 52% increase in gun sales, you're not ready. And even though there are many of those who said they've had enough, there's a lot more that says they, they still have. I, 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 I'm, I'm good. It's too many of those. You're not ready. You're outnumbered. And at this particular juncture, you're not united. 
It is only when we begin to unite ourselves in spite of our differences that we can begin to move forward. There are some of us who've been on this path for a long time, but we've been walking in the shadows. And the moment we emerge into the sunlight, you think we're brand new. You should be careful when you say that because there's an old saying where I'm from. Be careful who you step on on the way up. You might need them to break your fall on the way down. And I'm seeing a lot of that as we begin to stand up as a people. Some people will get it and they might get it before it's too late. But a lot of other people, well, I don't know what to tell you. I'm on my morning mental. And the ducks are calling. You all enjoy the rest of your day. Play this back and think about it. And if they take it off the air... Oh, hello. Well, by the way, I want to say something before I go. A lot of you all have been looking for uh, money to burn, which was the episode that is still here on on Instagram. But they immediately removed it from YouTube twice. It's available on Vimeo. If you go on Vimeo and type in money to burn, you'll find that whole episode. We're storing episodes over there, too, because it appears that the culture is afraid of black culture. They even call us a cult. Okay, we'll be that because a cult is nothing more than a culture and black culture is something we're trying to rebuild. This is my morning mental. I hope you all have a great day. I really do. And I bid you shalom. Assalamu alaikum to my Muslim brothers. God bless you to the, you all who are still Christians. Peace and light to all of the enlightened ones. Shalom. Here's a message to my unborn It's a cold world even when the sun's warm Only put our hands up when they guns drawn They simply don't feel us They wanna put three in our chest like the hiccups Young, black, and gifted And they still judge me I can give a damn as long as my daughters love me Bridget Byrne, you can hear it in my cadence Tell a man the truth, he quick to say that you hate him They think it happens overnight Now I take patience These women come forth, family God's in his paper Never judge before you love Guilty before innocent when you the same color as us German engineering when I steer it Always run directly towards it even when you fear it The stress get heavy, especially when you near it I'm talking about your goals And when you feel it in your soul You glow Hey son, you are the best thing that could have ever happened to me November 11, 1987 I am so proud of you and all of your accomplishments as a dad and a provider. You've been a great son. Made my own way. I don't need no handouts. Tell a nigga no. Now he not your man now. The hate starts showing. You hear it in they quote. Niggas be confused, claiming that they woke. 2020 luxury. Whip with the bucket seat. Love out the A1 who stuck with me from the mud and fuck with me. Gotta love Brit, cause she rode and she love a G. And she stayed down, that's what's up to me. Doing 60 and a 45. 45. I'ma need a clone just to count up all these blessed. All these blessed. Real niggas in the drought. Kept it 100 when these niggas couldn't count. Evolved from the boys, always was the man. Nowadays, these boys popping perks, popping zins. So I gotta move smart, do it with a plan. Teach my daughter's door for themselves, but never for a man.